ice caps and they are going to be this is going to be uh basically like Kane's it, it is Kane's Twitter franchise mode except we are running as an expansion team the Carolina Hurricanes were so productive and became the center of the hockey universe So basically, what happened is the Carolina Hurricanes got so popular and became such a wonderful franchise that the, the NHL elected to bring the Carolina Hurricanes a new division rival. In the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps. So there are two teams in Raleigh. I did Raleigh Durham because I thought it was funny. And so now we have the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps. This is a team that will be an expansion team. We switched them with Columbus in the Central. And so the Hurricanes will have a really, really awesome opportunity to have a rival here. And I am taking control of the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps because this is an expansion team. I want it to be, yeah, I want it to be exciting. And I, th I think it'll be fun. It's something new. I haven't done this in probably a couple years. Um, but so let's just go to quick settings real quick. Um, I like to show the overall and the player type and the potential. Um, that's all good. The last thing I want to do is I just want to change the injury settings because I don't want created players getting hurt all that often because it really kills the vibe when they do get hurt. Um, so yeah. Now, we are going to start the career. I am going to draft an expansion team. And we'll see where we go with it. Sorry, I'm trying to intimidate my cat. He's being a jerk. Just run away. Yeah, go play. Okay. So I may I, I I there wasn't really like a solid uh ice themed thing. We get the 5th overall pick, which is really cool. Um yeah, there really wasn't like a solid ice themed uh mascot other than the narwhal and then there was a walrus that you pro I don't even think I put on the uh, um, there was a walrus that I don't even think I put on the jersey so it's gonna be pretty plain I didn't put like a ton of effort into it but um, let's take a look here at who we can grab so from the Anaheim Ducks we have some options here and I'm listing four of these players as legitimate options. So Adam Henrique, first of all, would more than likely be the team, one of the team's top centers this year. We've also got Josh Manson, a 28-year-old defenseman. Um, Henrique has four years left on his contract, which is a little unfortunate. Manson only has two. Danton Heinen is 24 years old, 80 overall. And then Brendan Gould. 80 overall at age 22. So these are probably the four players I'm looking at. 
I'm leaning more towards Manson because I think if this team gets a solid enough defense, I could... I don't know. We'll swing back to Arizona for now. This is a team... You know, it, it really just kind of depends. So, I want to take somebody with term. And really, the only player that has any sort of potential on this team is Lawson Kraus. He has two years remaining. I don't think any of their goalies are worth taking. But here's here's where it's interesting, and I'm actually going to grab Jake DeBrusque from the Bruins. I think that would be a huge add for an expansion team. Um, which goalies did they not protect? Carter Hutton wouldn't be, like, terrible. Um, I think this is where I grabbed Jake McCabe. He's a free agent, um, at the end of, like, this offseason. And I'm actually going to grab Antti Ranta, um, from Arizona. Not from the Flames. Let's take a look. I could grab Giordano. I don't see any point in doing that. Nor do I really see the point in grabbing Backlund just because his contract is so bad. Did they leave me a goalie? David Riddick. So I've got my starting goalie tandem here. <laughs> um, oh, oh, oh my god. I've picked a lot of defensemen plus... Signing Hamilton would be a pain. <sighs> if anything cuts out, it's because my cat is being stupid and playing with wires. So, let's see. Andrew Shaw. None of these two picks would be bad. I'm going to pick Shaw, though. So, we have zero centers right now. Um... Okay, the Avalanche aren't giving me many options. However, I think if this is a team that's trying to build... Well, let's see what the auto picks are. Auto-generate picks. Let's see. Devon Taves, Boone Jenner. So I picked a lot of defensemen. I picked a lot of left-wing... I picked... A little too many right wingers it looks like so and one too few centers so I'm actually gonna pick a center here in Philpola just to have that like extra depth so the other goalies that I picked in this draft are Mackenzie Blackwood Wow um, Bode Wild getting a really good prospect in there is really nice uh, Connor Brown is all right um, the other, Brent Burns, I don't love, um, so I'm actually going to change that to Gambrell, er, so instead of this, I am going to pick Troy Stetcher. I don't like Brent Burns at all. I don't. Um, and so instead, I'm going to pick Dylan Gambrell. Um, it's looking like a decent team. So Blackwood and Hudobin. Um, I'm going to end up trading some of these goalies. Or maybe even letting some go to free agency. But I think this is a good roster. I think this team is important. We're going to move along. So let's see. We're going to the draft interviews because I don't know anybody around this area. I could pick up. More than likely who I'm going to spend this on is Plekhanov here. Unless one of these guys is available. Um, I do want to know a little more about Doyle. Hmm. 
His greatest strength is his physicality, his biggest weakness. Using his head more out there. Style of play. Does it change my scout's perception of him? No, actually, it doesn't. So I don't care anymore, then. It's just kind of a throwaway draft. So my best player had 43 points last year. Um, I don't want to edit my trade block before the draft. I don't even think I can make any trades, technically. Okay, so we've got the fifth overall pick. So before I do anything else, I'm going to make this pick. Um, Veracus is a grinder, unfortunately, so it probably won't mean that he produces. However, getting a elite prospect in this system will be important, and 73 overall is really good. I'm going to try my best to... Well, let's take a look. So Varakas is easily my best player. Goaltending, I have a goalie tandem that's going to be um, more than likely Ranta and Blackwood. So I'm going to try... Oh, Riddick. Riddick is a free agent. As is Hudobin, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's not. Um, so let me actually, instead of Riddick, try Hudobin. Nobody wants him. Okay. So we're just going to have to wait till the end of the draft then um, to try and find him a new home. But we'll send to pick 35 now, which is our second round pick. This is mostly just throwaway prospects at this point. Um... Again, I'm really just trying to build a franchise from the bottom up. Tucker Tynan's actually not a bad prospect, so I'm going to draft him. I think he's like medium starter. Yeah, medium starter, which isn't terrible. Um, and we're just going to keep going here. So, yeah, any player that has like a... Yeah, um, we're just going to send the entire draft because I doubt any of these unsigned prospects are very good. So here we are at the re-sign phase. Probably half my team is free agents at this point. Um, okay, no, I actually only have a couple free agents. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, McCabe doesn't want to re-sign. I am going to let him walk um, in free agency and try and find somebody better. Who who else was expiring? There was like one other player, Gambrell, and I'm gonna just qualify him. And try and offer him what he wants, but if he says no, then you know what, whatever. Goaltending. So like I said, it's going to be Blackwood and Ranta here. So we're just going to offer Ranta for quite some time. And Blackwood, I guess he only wants a year to prove himself. Riddick we're going to release. And then that's going to be it for the signings. So now, what I normally... What I normally would do is I would normally um, 
sign free agents to make my team the best that it possibly can. This time around, though, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to try and just sign prospects and run with this expansion team. Um, I am also going to find a trade for Hudobin really quick because I don't want to keep him on the roster. Okay, so Carolina actually wants to trade a third and a fourth round pick in next year's draft. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Um, just gets me some picks. That's really what I want in the future. But let's take a look at uh, how those other prospects were that we drafted. Uh, I think the easiest way to do it is this. So everybody else except for this Robinson player doesn't have what it takes. And this guy, even though Dylan Robinson is a stretch in the fifth round. Uh, my cat has figured out to, how to open up the cabinets. He's really pissing off. I have a phone call. Give me one second. Okay. Sorry. So, Trevor, what you have missed is not much. All I did was expansion, and I'll show the roster when I finish. I was on the phone um, when you sent that comment. Rally Durham. Yeah, no, I, I did that to be funny. Um, <laughs> I did that to be funny. I know there's a rally. But as you can see, Connor Brown is on the roster. Um... I'm not going to make any of... I made one trade. I traded Anton Hudobin um, to the Hurricanes, actually, who were the only ones that wanted him. And I got him for... Um, uh, a third and a fourth, I think. And not in this year's draft, but in the following draft. So it's going to be a while... Um, I think before this team is very good, but we'll make it, we'll make it work. Um, we had one, the, you have like a draft that's like the 2020 draft, but without any of like the actually good prospects. So they have to create like a first round and then everybody else just kind of sucks. So, um, we just drafted a medium elite uh, I think he was a right winger, and I think he was like a grinder or something. So, like, not very great. But really, all I wanted to do in free agency was sign some um, decent prospects or AHL depth. So, here's my team. 
We've got a first line of James Van Riemsdyk, Boone Jenner, and Nino Niederreiter. Second line is Jake DeBrusque, Andrew Shaw, and Connor Brown. I'm actually going to... Ooh, nope, never mind. Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> Third line is Andre Palat, Jay Beagle, and Daniel Sprong. Fourth line is Nick Patan, Austin Wagner, and Dylan Gambrell. Going to change that up right there. Defensively, the team is looking at Devon Taves, Josh Manson, Anton Strawman, Nathan Beaulieu, Bode Wild, and Troy Stetcher. So hopefully that will be pretty good. Goaltending is Ranta and Blackwood, so this will be the team's strong suit this year. We also have Kevin Rooney and Paul Byron as our scratches. So defensively, the team is okay. They've got four like solid NHL defensemen, even though two of them probably belong on like a bottom pair. You've got Nathan Beaulieu, who really at this point is just kind of like a seventh defenseman, and then you've got a decent prospect here. So... Goaltending is definitely going to um, carry the team. We're not even going to look at the AHL. Wow, that was awful. But yeah, so definitely going to rely on the team's goaltending this year um, and see where that takes us. So since this is an expansion team, and you missed the whole origin story. Basically, the origin story is Raleigh became the center of the hockey universe thanks to the Carolina Hurricanes' success these past two years. So the NHL has decided to promptly give the city of Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina, an extra team in the National Hockey League in the Metropolitan Division. So I moved Columbus to the Central and just put... Um, the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps in their place. So, the center of the hockey universe, Raleigh Durham, North Carolina, has two NHL teams now. We are in the Metro, so it is going to be tough. Um, I think the best player we took from the Metro is JVR from Philly. Um, and it's not looking great. We didn't have a single win in the preseason. We went 0-6-1, um, which might not bode well for the team. Um, before I forget, since this team is going to need scouts, uh, or we are going to need to draft well, I should say, I am going to hire, not for that, uh, well, yes, for that long, but I will fire them. I'm going to hire an extra USA scout, and then I definitely need... Why do I have three Nordic scouts? Um, I guess this WHL scout is the best. Mm. I'm going to hire an extra European scout. Just to have some extra representation. Um... I think that'll be good. Got one scout. So here we are. We are going to simulate the game. This is an away game, so the team's first regular season game in franchise history, the Raleigh-Durham Ice Caps versus the Dallas Stars. First period, Dallas gets three goals on Ranta. Second period, Jamie Benn gets another. And the third period, Nino Niederreiter scores the first goal in franchise history. But unfortunately, it is the first loss in franchise history as well. So the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps fall in the first game of the season. We we'll move to Florida. I at least want to sim until this team gets a win. I've got both scouts now. Yeah, so it might be a second. And if, if we get to like the first five games and we don't get a win, I'll just give up. Ugh. You know what, I, I think I'm just going to keep simming. Like, we would be here for forever. So we're going to sim to the trade deadline because I anticipate the Canes make, or the, the Canes, the Ice Caps making a few moves at the deadline to not necessarily tank their team, but to get some draft picks because we don't really have a prospect pool right now. Speaking of draft rankings, 
Oh, you briefly saw them. All right. So who... The Ottawa Senators are the first team to lose to the Raleigh-Durham Icecaps. A 4-2 win is the first win in franchise history. And then we get another win against the Anaheim Ducks. So the the Raleigh-Durham Icecaps are experiencing their first milestone as a franchise. They have played their first games, and they have won their first game. So this is a very important um, season for the franchise. Most expansion teams aren't good. I feel like I picked this team to the best of my ability. And by the best of my ability, I mean mostly simmed. Four nothing win. That's our team's first shutout. So this team's actually not doing as poorly as I thought they would be. I thought we would be very bad. Um, about to hit 800 followers on Netfront. Well, wow. okay. So here we go. Eight, nine, and I mean, like, the team just finds ways to win, man. This is crazy. Um, yeah, I better hope it would be a good year. I mean, I've created so many players for this year. Nathan Bull, you are injured neck for a week, so not too bad, actually, but we really don't have any defensemen that are able to really replace him in the roster. So that's um, a bit of a yikes. There is a Chicago Wolves game in um, just a little bit, actually. Picking up Mark Mathot on waivers? Um, no. Bull U is back too, so that's that's actually really good. Um. I'd have to say, I'm impressed. The Battle of Raleigh and the Canes lose. Or the Canes win, excuse me, 7-3. to three, So the Raleigh-Durham Ice Caps will have to wait to beat their uh, city rivals. It's kind of interesting. That might be an interesting storyline to follow, is when the uh, Ice Caps beat the Hurricanes. So one thing I know for sure is that the team needs to upgrade on defense and especially at forward. Um, so this year drafting will be very important. Um, it's going to be important to draft a player that the Hurric or that the uh, Ice Caps fans can embrace as the cornerstone of the franchise, because right now you don't really have that. You have. Um, You have Van Riemsdyk, and you have Vranta, but that's not it. That's not enough. Like, you can't... You can't build a franchise around James Van Riemsdyk. You can't build a franchise around Antiranta. You know, so you're going to need, like, at least some production... Or you're going to need a franchise... Face and what Vegas did well is they drafted Flurry in the expansion draft and had like their face of the franchise. I feel like the only face of the franchise was Brent Burns, and I didn't want to build a franchise around the rotting carcass of Brent Burns. You know, like it just didn't make a ton of sense to me. But 
regardless, I think that in this draft you can find at least one face of the franchise, or at least one future face of the franchise. There's a big win against the Sharks and the Ducks. Wow. So we're killing the West Coast. Um, which I guess it wouldn't be too hard. I mean, we took Gambro, who was like, you know, the number three center on the Sharks. And I forget, we took Manson from the Ducks, and that was like a decent departure. We've beaten, we shut out the Oilers, and we already had beaten them earlier this season. So we did win one series, at least this year. Um, and I know we've also beaten the Ducks twice. So it's crazy. It's crazy how this team is operating right now. And it, I'm not necessarily surprised to see where we're at. However, I'm happy. My cat just made the weirdest damn noise. I think he was dreaming. But yeah, we're 8th in the division, which is not surprising. This is always a very competitive division. Um, yeah. Jay Beagle, out with a broken nose until February 1st. And that's actually not too bad because we don't play a ton of games until then. And yeah, so the only game we play is two days before. Today is going to be Seth Jarvis's last AHL game. That's all but I mean, he has to because the the Winterhawks start their camp on Friday. So another battle of North Carolina here with the Canes and Ice Caps, and Troy Stetcher injured his hamstring in this game. And the Ice Caps win. They take the win over the Carolina Hurricanes, splitting the series. And they were missing a few players. Wow. So we are by no means a good team, but we have some good pieces. Okay. Another just we're on a four game winning streak. Holy cow. That's just insane, man. I I can't believe it. Five games this team. Wow. Um, playoff team, but it's really, really nice to have. Um, how? It's just nice to have a competitive team. Um, I hit conservative seller. I don't know what was happening. So we'll enter the trade deadline here. Um, the best players available. Josh Manson, but he's actually not going anywhere. This is a player that I see as a future member of my team. Um, so we're going to touch on our trading block here, and we're going to take off some players. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see who's on an expiring contract and see who I view. Oh, wow, 77 uh, after the draft. He was a 73 when we drafted him. I want to see like who I don't view as a player on this team in the future. Um, Strawman, for sure. 
He might be it. Troy Stetcher. I don't have a ton of defensemen, so this does kind of worry me. Like, what the hell my team is going to look like. Um, and Kofner. That's it. That's all I'm going to put on the block. So the Canadians have traded Caden Ghoul in exchange for Oli Mata. Oh. So I'm going to try and actually find a trade for Anton Strawman here. If I can get a third round pick and a seventh round pick, third and a fourth, let's keep that my, in mind with Calgary and Dallas. Can I get any picks in this year's draft, though? No, but I will accept that trade, and I will gladly take that pick. A first round pick and Hugo Almafelt for who? Jared Spurgeon. Wow. So you know what? I, I think we've made enough moves. I only want to make the one trade. I think we're good. I don't think we're going to get many offers that I actually like. Um, and for the most part, there really weren't any players that I, I didn't want to see on the team. Like I, I think the team's core is very good. Seth Jones got traded for Cole Perfetti, Logan Stanley, and a first. Wow. That's a... Big trade. Ron Hainsey, I had no idea he was still playing. I thought he retired. Oh my god, I had no idea. I swear to you I thought he retired. I am going to not look at the draft rankings. I mean, this team, we're not winning that many games, but we are a team that um, I am legitimately... I'm legitimately surprised that this team is doing this well. This is kind of what we thought Vegas would be like, you know? All right, last game of the season. Let's see if we can end it on a win. This is also at home against the Avalanche. First period, Piton, Taves, and Manson score. Second period, Taves gets his second. Sprong scores as well. Tie game in the third. We'll go to overtime. Do you want me to play overtime, Trevor? Do you want me to play overtime with my new team, or would you like me to... Just sim it like I always. Do. No, let's just sim it. I don't want to. I don't want to stay. I don't want to be inconsistent. Now, when this team does have their first ever playoff game, I will call the entire game. As will I when the team has their first home playoff game. So I will. E I won't play any of it, obviously, but we will be watching the entirety of those two games because those are big franchise milestones. Now you get to see the jerseys. Um, I didn't really put a ton of effort into them. <laughs> I did not. Um, great play by Josh Manson to break that up, though. And here come the ice caps with the narwhal at center ice. Boone Jenner with the shot. Oh, again on the rebound. He almost put it in. Van Riemsdyk shoots again, scores! The Ice Caps win! I don't know. That was fun. Way to end the season. You obviously don't make the playoffs in your first season in existence. However, you do end the season on a win, on a high note with an overtime win against a pretty good 
Avalanche team. And even though you finished last in your division, you you have something to be proud of. Um, the NHL season is complete, as is the AHL season, so we're actually just going to check the NHL roster here and see like how good our team did. So James Van Riemsdyk had a 59-point season. Um, this is actually his best season since his last season with Toronto, which is pretty pretty imp impressive. Um, I'm happy to see that. Obviously, the minus 33 isn't great, but I like the points. Nino Niederreiter having one of his best seasons um, since the year he was traded, actually. Well, okay, well, still a 50-point season. Then Palat and DeBrusque and Brown, all 40-plus point scorers. So, yeah, I mean, scoring was definitely an issue on this team. Goaltending actually wasn't that bad. So it really just looks like goal scoring was the issue, um, which I kind of expected it would be because our number one center was 80 overall. Um, but again, like, not terrible. I'm, I'm happy with that. So we'll sim to the draft. Um, yeah, things going. I think that that's a really impressive. Jeff Skinner played 224 at even strength in the first period of today's game and played just 304 in the first period total. So, ha! It's so funny how the Sabres are, like, trying to act like they want Skinner to succeed. So we finished 8th um, in the NHL, actually. So we will get the 8th overall pick, which isn't bad. That last win did hurt us, I think. We, I think we could have gotten, like, 7th or 8th. Fuck, I didn't mean to check the draft rankings. God damn! Um, gotta trade up. I'm thinking about it. I, I am thinking about it. Um, the problem is I don't really have any assets to trade up. So let's see. Picking eighth overall, first overall. Are there any teams that want to? No, there are no teams that want to trade their picks. So I'm actually going to stick with just the one eighth overall pick because it would be impossible. Um, I am going to draft with my first pick. Richard Stuffington, because this is a created player. Or, ooh, or should I grab Smushy, who's the franchise goalie? Trevor, what do you think? I could draft the franchise goalie, or I could grab a top defenseman in this draft. Um... The goaltender would help, but that really wasn't the problem. Plus, I do kind of need defense, which is why I'm leaning towards a creative player, Richard Stuffington. Go with the goalie. Yeah, I guess I could. Plus, it would be the, f um, the face of the franchise here. Okay, so we'll sim to the 40th overall pick now. Um, <laughs> where I could have grabbed a goalie. Okay. Well, here I am actually going to grab the defenseman. I am going to grab... I mean, it's either Meg or Will. We were weaker on the left side, so I'm going to grab Will. They're both low elite def uh, defensemen, and I both I believe they're both two-way. So Elise went first to Ottawa. Rip. Will Sample, or what is it? Warren Sample uh, from the Discord. Uh, went to Calgary, second overall. Trevor, you are an Arizona Coyote. Kevin went to L.A. Tom went to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And my player went to the Detroit Red Wings. So we have our franchise cornerstone in net. And um, 
we now have our team's ideal top, or at least one of the team's cornerstones on defense. Um, I'm going to pick Jesper Wallstedt here because I think he's the best player available. Yeah, medium start goalie. I know I should have tried to tra trade up, but the problem is if no team wants to trade up, then it's impossible. Like if no team wants to give up that pick, it's impossible. And with the lack of resources that I have, it would literally be like a pain in the ass. So I'm going to try and draft Connor Roulette here um, just because my scouts know him. Medium top nine forward again, you know, like I'm just kind of looking to build up a prospect pool here of at least some decent prospects. And most of these guys, just given how my prospect pool works right now, most of these guys are going to actually play. Um, I don't want to keep drafting goalies. I already have too many. Um, too many good goalies. So we'll draft this low top six forward in Jude Bolton here. I think that's perfect. You get another prospect with decent potential in the uh, system here. Um, low top 4D, Aaron Marks. This is perfect. Another pick that, oh, wow, 49 overall. Yikes. Well, hopefully he can turn into something. If not, I might just trade him. And you've got Joe Carroll, who I actually don't want to draft. So we'll draft Gustav Vishnevsky instead, since my, since my scouts seem to know something about him. But he's still not that great. Overall, we get the franchise goalie, and we get a top four defenseman. I, I think it's an okay draft. I think we, we really do get a defenseman that can be an important fixture on this team. Now what I need to do is I need to really sit here and consider my scouting staff and try and improve in a, at least a couple different places. Um, so that is what I want to do right now. All right, the start of the resign phase here. So a lot of my team's going to have expiring contracts right now, and most of these guys are going to be re-signed. Gambro, 82, he, he grew to an 82 overall, and this is exactly what I was hoping for. It's like, you got a guy who's 23, give him some more minutes, and I think that you get, you'll like what you get from him. Boone Jenner, he's only 28, but he doesn't actually want to re-sign, which is a little annoying. Um, we'll qualify Brooks here, and I think that'll be it. Um, the left wing, Palat wants to re-sign. I think I'm happy with giving him three years. Two years, actually, just add a little bit more. Jake DeBrusque also wants to re-sign for three years. That's a perfect contract right there. Um, again, I don't love any of this, but Kuffner, you know what, will qualify you. Nino, I'm definitely going to re-sign. Um, I don't want to give him six years, but let's go with four. I think four is a good good amount of time. Um, wow. Yeah, Shaw doesn't want to re-sign. So it looks like, you know, we, we have to fill a few slots on the NHL roster. Um, but I, I think what I'm going to do is I don't want to have, like, a super team right away. Oh, shit. I don't want to have a super team right away. Um, so I think what I'll do instead is I'm going to make a few adjustments. Um, and when I say when I say adjustments, I mean basically this, like we're going to only sign enough players to fill the NHL roster. And Blackwood, since I have Smushy, is actually not going to be re-signed. Um, so let me grab Will Looper. Boom. And let's get Varaka signed too, so he can play in the AHL. Um, possibly even the NHL with how he's looking. Um, and then let's sign Smushy. So, 
like, for instance, if we... I, I don't want to sign too many players. And I'm thinking we don't sign any top free agents for at least the first three years of our existence as a team. So Palat and Manson both want a little bit more money, and I think that's fine. Again, I didn't want to give Palat all that much um, term, so I think that should be good to get him signed with Manson. Palat I only wanted to give three years, I think. Mm, let's do two instead. So that should be enough to get both of those guys signed. So I'm just, I, I don't want this team to be fantastic right away. Boom, okay. I just want them to be good enough for the playoffs for a little while, because I want this to be semi-realistic. Like, it, it's not very likely that everybody's going to be like a Las Vegas, you know? Or a Vegas, because they didn't go with the loss for whatever reason. Oh, I just saw Vegas actually won the cup, so that's funny. Um, I've got three scouts to hire this year. Um, I need to hire an NHL scout, um, I need to hire an extra Russian scout, and then a QMJHL scout. This year. Matthew, Matthew, wait a second. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew. <laughs> oh, that's good. I also, thought, okay, I do need an AHL assistant coach. This guy retired in his last year because he was like, no, nah, I don't want to deal with this anymore. He did not want to deal with my bad teams, which I don't necessarily blame him. Um, so we'll go ahead and hire Jaden Reagan, or at least hopefully we'll hire her. Gotta make sure that's not important. Starting lineup for today's Wolves game. That's actually, it's not like terribly important, but you know, like, it, it it's nice. Is David Cotton's on the starting lineup today, so I believe this is his first game playing again. Um, I don't think he played yesterday or two days ago, but I could be wrong. So let's take a look and see what the team needs. Um, at center, I need three centers. Okay. I need one, two. I'm good on the left wing. I'm fine on the right wing. And I need two defensemen. So I need three centers and two defensemen. And that'll be it. Can do. I'm not going to assign Braden Point. Um... Nazem Kadri, I think this is the perfect opportunity. He's not a big name free agent, I don't believe. Is that a 6.2 or an 8.2? I can't tell, so we're going to overestimate. So we'll give Kadri this contract. Um, like I said, I need three centers, so Vincent Trocek, perfect. Again, He's not like a super good center, but he's a decent like this is a this is what I'd consider like a good signing. And then as our fourth line center, I'm actually gonna sign a fourth line center. Um and make it Noel Achari here. One year. That's way too much for a fourth line center. Now, again, I needed how many defensemen? 
2, 2. And I'm just going to assign, like, good defensemen, not, like, great ones. So Sammy Votnin doesn't fit the system, otherwise he would have been perfect. Travis Hamanick fits on all defensive pairings and all power play lines. He's not very good, nor do I want to give him close to that amount of money. Boom. And then Nick Letty, if he fits the system, that would be perfect. Maybe Justin Schultz. Schultz fits defensive pairing three, buddy. You would be much higher than that on this team. McNabb doesn't fit here. So let's actually go with Letty because I think, you know what, the team should start having like a legitimate first pairing. I'm only going to give him two years, though. So there we go. That's what I want for the team on... Like, the team's, quote, upgrades. Like, we upgraded at forward, for sure. And we upgraded defensively. So now, let's go and sign just some AHL depth here. I'm not going to sign anybody crazy. Um, we're just going to get some prospects. Uh... We're going to try and just sign some players to make our AHL team competitive. Um, yeah, again, just like nobody super good, just somebody I can kind of fill a role at the AHL level. Uh, I don't even think I have AHL goalies right now, do I? So let's grab some goaltenders. Oh no, I signed Sogard and somebody else. Um, so I'm actually good. I forgot about that. So I think we're good. Um, I got one scout, two scout, red scout, blue scout. I got my assistant coach. Oh, we got my third scout. Okay. So Trocek signed, as did Achari, Letty, Baptiste, Kurashev, Wa, Yan, and Hamanik. Sorry, RV. Who am I waiting on? Kadri. Okay, so I got everybody I wanted to sign. Kadri would have been our leading scorer last year, which is huge. I think this team could be... I don't want to say a playoff team, but at least, like, closer. Yeah, I don't want to say that we'll be a playoff team. Flyers just went up 2 nothing, And the Wolves are up one nothing Thanks to Discord. Tomasino with the goal. Good on him. All right. No trade offers. I'm not, like, terribly surprised. So, Frederick Allah with the assist on Tomasino's goal. So here we go. James Van Riemsdyk, Nazem Kadri, Nino Niederreiter. That's that's a good NHL like second line. It's not like the best, but like it's not quite a first line, but you know, it's it's getting there. Then you've got Trocheck, DeBrusque, and Brown, and that's actually more looking like a second line as well. Then you've got Gambrell, Palat, and Sprong, a solid third line. Achari, Patan, and Wagner. So you have a team that has four actually NA actual NHL lines now. Not great, and there's still no real like stars on offense here, but Kadri is definitely a good addition. Defensively, you've got Letty and Manson, you've got Taves and Hamannick, and then you've got Will and Stetcher. So Will could be a very big addition to this team. Goaltending, you've got Ranta and Smushy. What I'm actually going to do is, because what I'm realizing is that my coach doesn't actually... <sighs> He's not very good. He's a B. Are there any better coaches available? NHL head coach. There's one name is Tarnaski. A 56 
fit. What does my current head coach have in terms of team fit? 55. Okay. So maybe I take a look next season or during the off season to see what's going on here. Um, just because it doesn't look like there's anything going on right now. All right, so let's take a look at the lines really quick. So Reese is on a line with Bach. Suzuki and Jarvis are on the same line, and Cotton is on the second line. Keen is playing with Warsawski. Um, so I'm going to keep an, keep up with the Wolves game. So I don't think this is a playoff team just yet. It really depends on if we get growth from Will. Um, but I think this is a team that could at least make some noise in the East this year. Um, again, I'm not sure how much. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, though. Let's just make sure our scouting is all in order this year. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, I don't think I made any like huge changes. Oh. Um I'm not scouting the USA East. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, well, that's fine. Okay. First game of the season is at Detroit. And we start the season with two of our first three games being uh, against division opponents. We lose to Detroit. We lose to the Capitals. It's the Battle of North Carolina. Here's the central scouting rankings, just in case. Um, Trevor, do you want me to do where the draft picks are high this time, or would you rather me not? I'll leave that up to you. Battle of North Carolina, and it's a loss, but we do get our first win of the season against the Blackhawks. So we get it a little earlier than we did last time. Big win against Tampa, um, a very difficult team. And yeah, so hopefully we can see um, this team take another step forward this year. Louis Domingue, that's a goaltender I don't need. I'm never going to add, um, I'm not going to add at the deadline for a while now. It's like, what I'm going to do is, again, like, this is, that was season, off season number one of not signing any big name free agents. Um, because I want, I want this team to be good, but I, I think we should try and build up, um, our own stars before we start to maybe sign just random stars. I think the goal for this season would be a 500 or better team. We were close, at least fairly close last year. Um, I think think it would be nice to have at least close to a 500 record. A bit weaker than normal. Okay. There's a big 3 to nothing win over the Blue Jackets team whose place we took in this division.
Noel Acharya with a strained hamstring until the 29th. Ouch. But two big wins, once against Calgary and once against New York, gives the Ice Caps a little bit of hope. The Ice Caps are looking like a good team, man. I'm liking it. Achari back in the next game. Um, I basically would give up a prospect and just get an, uh, uh, and just trade a third round pick for a third round pick. So that's not worth it. Um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I don't know why I would have done that. <laughs> <sighs> Excuse me. I do want to be able to contend in the Metro, like, fairly soon. Hopefully this will... I mean, this is a weak draft, it says, but I do have a handful of draft picks in this draft coming up. So, um... I'm hoping that if I do get a draft pick, that it's a fairly high pick. That way I can at least attempt to get an elite player in this draft. So here we go. Big wins against the... Oh, wow, three games in a row with a win after a decent losing streak. Um, Low-scoring games again, and it's looking like goal scoring is still an issue for this team um, this year. But I'm, I'm liking where we're at. I'm... I'm liking how close we are to becoming a good team again. Like we're 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 close, and I really I really believe that. Um, Hamannik out with concussion syndrome. Ouch. Uh, yeah, that's not good. I would actually argue that that sucks. Um, that's unfortunate. North Carolina, though, the can the Canes get a win? They do seven to four, and they want to trade me Tyler to Foley. So, again, here's the thing: I don't want to trade for. I don't want to make any trades that would make me win the playoffs. I'm still trying to play it close to my chest and keep the team like good but not great for a little while I want this to be like truly building the team up from scratch I want it to be a challenge is really what I want it to be I think that's more of a better way to put it I guess so I'm not gonna say yes to a lot of trades unfortunately but big win against the Canadians, another win to get us over 500. Overtime loss? We don't lose a ton of overtime loss or overtime games, which is kind of interesting. Braden McNabb, that's a bad contract. I like, um, I don't know, I like how we're performing. I do. I think this is a much better year for the ice caps. All right, new draft rankings. Oh shit, I Well, dang it. We're not going to know what the new draft rankings are unfortunately. <laughs> But Nazem Kadri out with an injured groin until the end of the okay. Well, that's no big deal. And we shut out the Jets. We're on a three-game win streak. Point streak. That's interesting. Um, that I... This isn't for a while. This is next year's draft. So my second round pick is basically worth both of theirs. I'm going to say no to this, but I do want to get a draft pick from them. 
I'm gonna try and get a fourth. Okay. I'm gonna try and get a fifth. Okay, can I get a seventh in next year's draft for a guy that we drafted in the fourth round last year? Okay, I can. So let me see if I can get a sixth. Okay, let me see if I can get a fifth in next year's draft. I'm just going to keep pushing my luck. Okay, so the most I could get is a sixth. And you know what? Like, this trade doesn't affect anything. And that sixth round pick probably won't make it to the NHL. But that prospect was definitely not making it to the NHL. So I'm basically just getting another asset for somebody that I'm never going to sign. You know, like, I, I don't think that that's ba that bad of an asset management there. Like, yes, it sucks that your fourth round pick was a low bottom six forward, but like, they for whatever reason they they make you do that draft again and they just make you have like terrible prospects. So like, I don't know. I just use it to get late round picks from other teams later on. Um, I mean to say. If you were to tell me that I'd be close to fourth in the division or fifth in the division in February in my second year, like I'd be a little surprised. And again, it just goes to the fact that we've we've added solid players. We're fourth in the division now, one point behind the cap, one point behind the Rangers for first or for third. I don't know why I said for first. couple big wins here um it's really like just a race for third in the division at this point um first and second are pretty tough to cap catch up to um but there's like five teams in the mix for third in the division right now which is a little annoying getting hammonick back though huge deal I'm going to keep simming. I don't want to do the trade deadline this year. I am staying put. Okay. So... At the trade deadline, your Rally Durham Ice Caps are fourth in the division and four points behind the Rangers for third. It's doable. However, we don't play the Rangers again this season. So I don't know how you make up that ground, unfortunately. Big win. But then a huge loss against Chicago. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but all three of our games against Carolina this season have been followed by a team like Chicago. I can't be right. Well, we played Chicago last time. Okay, we'll view the draft class. It's looking more like we'll have a... A pick outside of the top 10, so probably around 11th this year. That's just my guess. Um, still no gems. I don't expect my scouting staff to have too many gems. Um, oh, Manson out for the season. That, or well, a good chunk of the season. That's probably going to end our playoff hopes. I mean, it, it's still technically possible. We are only four points behind the Rangers. Make it two points now. We have games in hand, but I don't think it will matter. With Manson back, though, you never know. That's it. You heard 
are the last playoff team in the division. We cannot um, can't gain any more ground than we did. I actually wouldn't hate us to lose against Edmonton here just to get a better draft position. We lose in overtime, so we get another point. That's a little unfortunate, but whatever. Okay. So 37, 36, and 9 is a better record, and the team finishing 6th in the division is better. Vincent Trocek was our best addition, adding a 63-point season. I like that very much. Okay, the, the constant notifications are getting a little annoying. I'm sorry. The NHL season is complete, as is the AHL season. Obviously, neither team made the playoffs. I think our AHL team is still kind of butt cheeks, but... Um, so we had three 60-point scorers, which is something we didn't have any of last season. Um, but we also had less 40-point scorers. Um, and just one guy in the 50s. So let's check out rookie skaters. Will with 16 points in 82 games. Varakas, also a brand new player on the roster, I guess. Played 63 games and had 13 points. Goaltending. Smushy, he was 10-1-3. So actually, when called upon, he was the better of the two goalies on the roster, which is very interesting. Um, maybe if we played him more, uh, it would have been better, but I don't know. So this is something that you build on. And this is something where you're going to take... Uh, you're going to get rid of the, the dead weight on your team, and you're going to add better players. And I think there's a few players that we can get rid of and at least improve upon to make this team a playoff team next year. The May draft class rankings, so this should be the last... Um, This should be the last um, draft rankings before we really get an idea of where we're picking. Again, more than likely we're picking 11th. That's my guess. One gem in this draft, and it's Per Forstrom. I'm going to try and get the potential in comparison on him. And I just got the Discord notification. Jamison Reese just scored a power play goal for the Wolves. Um, haven't heard his in a while. Biggest back-to-back -back cups. Wow. Craziness. Oh, we move up from 11th to 1st. Let's go! Some luck! We move up from 11th to 1st overall. Wow! So we have the option to pick Johan Seidenberg. Central Scouting ranks him 1st. Our Scouts rank him 2nd. With a Temu Solani comparison. Or we could get Ed Booth with also a Temu Solani comparison. So I could pick the guy with two A pluses, two A's, and two A minuses. Or the guy with. 2A pluses, 2As, and 2A minuses. These are literally the same players, although one of them is 6, 3, and 17. Hmm. Well, we have the opportunity to grab, and I, I was talking about this, we needed that franchise forward, and now we have it. We have the forward that we can finally build our franchise around and make something out of it. This is a very big deal for the organization. Um, we'll take a look at the um, the points from around or the awards from around the league. So obviously, Vegas and Toronto was the Stanley Cup final. The Calder this year went to Cole Perfetti. Um, we'll take a look at rookie scoring league wide. Um, cause that's probably way easier than seeing. Uh, 
Oh, so we're not. We're just not gonna do, be nice. Okay. <sighs> just do it this way. We'll see if there were any like crazy, crazy point totals from a rookie this season. I I sincerely doubt it. Um. Oh, Sebastian Ajo, Natchez, and Taravainen, all 75 points. Talk about consistency, man. Um, I don't remember where everybody got drafted. Oh, Cogburn, Jericho Cogburn. So this was a created player, 66 points. That's insane. Um... I don't even know, man. Trevor, who did you... You got drafted by Arizona. You had 44 points, which is pretty solid. I think you, you left to do something, but you had 44 points for when you watched this. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the progress we made. Moving up to first overall is a very big deal for your Raleigh Durham Ice Caps. And I think we're going to pick Ed Booth. This is a guy that, again, like, it comes down to the size. And his character is a weakness. I don't care. Magic Hands Pro Release and Skating. He is NHL ready. And this is a guy 81 out of the draft. Boom. We get a franchise player. And we move to 43rd overall. Where we have the potential to, again, make some... Make some waves here. Um, there's a medium elite goalie. I don't want a medium elite goalie. Uh, Kimo Hall is an option. I don't have many centers. I'm going to draft Danny Zilkin here. Medium top nine forward. So he's not like the top four, top six. Like There's definitely a uh, a drop there. However, the Canes, the Canes, the Ice Caps do grab a player that is one of their top prospects already. So that's encouraging to see. A couple other gems that I guess we hadn't seen. There's a medium elite grinder. Here. Wait a second. Um, this medium elite grinder is really good. However, there's like two players around here that are all gems. I'm going to pick up Christian Betts probably. Yeah. I think Betts is a good bet. <laughs> Retweet that real quick. Sorry, prospect news. And Jamison Reese just got um, uh, his second goal of the day, allegedly. All right. Our next pick. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so we have one pick here. They picked Zvister. He's not very good, and that's my only concern, is that we'd be picking another grinder that doesn't really look that good. So I'm actually going to pick Forstrom here, because grinders rarely make it to the NHL. Um, so we grab those two gems. The Canes might end up... Who's going to end up picking that grinder? I want to see. Teams are actively avoiding him. Uh, yeah, 52 overall is not great. So we move to our next third round pick, and that's at 83rd overall. If he was still available, I would have considered picking him up. Would have considered it, yeah. But he wasn't. So nothing to do. There is a top nine forward here, and that's that would immediately be like a solid pick for me. I'm just going to look and see like what else we have going on later in the draft. We've got Erhoff is a possible option. There's May. Um, 
Um, May might be a good option with the pick now, but the only problem is he's likely, yeah, like most of these guys are likely not what they are. So I'm going to pick the guaranteed top nine forward here, Ludwig Rodin. Just grab a guy that needs a lot of time to develop. 107 is the team's next pick. Couple options. I'm liking. I don't know. I think I need to take at least one goaltender. Just to have a goalie, you know? And then I can take a chance on. I've taken a lot of forwards, so let's grab Cowan here. Let's see if Dylan Cowan is actually good. Low top 60, that's definitely not very good. We move just a couple picks now. Um, I'm going to try and see if this low top 4D guy is actually what he says he is. Low top 60, yeah, no. Okay. I'm a little disappointed with this draft, but I'm not like terribly surprised about it either. We'll grab, a, we'll grab another goalie. He's 20, medium elite, 59 overall. We'll see. I don't know. That's not fantastic. This guy's probably medium bottom six. No, he's actually medium top nine, but he is 19, so that's why he fell. Definitely somebody who didn't really develop a lot last between this past year and the last... But that's fine. Um, I'm just getting a player that, you know, might be good. And then this late in the draft, I you don't really know what you're going to get. I've already drafted two goalies, I think. Maybe just the one. But either way, I'm going to draft Shirokov here. Vyacheslav Shirokov. And that that's it. Okay. A pretty decent draft. I mean, after you get the first overall pick, you don't really get any, like sure things, but you're definitely getting an NHL player out of this draft class because you get the first overall pick. So I'll live with it. Resign coaches. I'm not bringing my head coach back. I'll bring my associate and assistants back. but I am not bringing my head coach back. I, I think it would be silly of me to bring my head coach back. My scouting staff, I'm actually going to say goodbye to this Liga scout. There's no reason for me to have three Nordic scouts. I'm going to fire that scout and get just a better NHL scout. Same here. I'm going to try and get a better WHL scout. And I'm going to fire my OHL scout. So there we go. I have fired a lot of players, or staff members. The best expiring free agent that I have is Daniel Sprong. Three years, I think, is fine. He had a really good, I think it was like 50-point season, something like that. Gambrell wants a contract. I'm going to bring him back, but not Noel Achari. I'm going to bring Jack Drury back into the fold, and I'm not going to bring Adam Brooks back. JVR wants four more years. Hell nah. One more year is all you get. <laughs> Um, Byron doesn't want an extension, that's fine. I'll qualify Wagner and draws as well as Robinson, just because I don't really have many prospects. Right wingers, Connor Brown. Definitely bringing him back. I'm not going to bring Nick Patan back, um, just because I think I can do better. Laudnia, why not? Trupchenko, same thing. Corrado isn't very good, but like, again, it's a prospect. Not bringing either of those defensemen in. Bode Wild, 
I'm excited. I think he's going to keep getting better and better. Carrier is not going to get an extension. I'm going to sign Tucker Tynan. Uh, and Colton Ellis. Um, just because I think that that's probably the best way to go for me right now. Ranta has two years remaining on this deal. Okay. All right, cool. So let's take a look. Unsigned prospects. So goaltending, I have... I have a decent core of goaltending prospects that are unsigned. Last year's draft, I mean, again, I already signed my top two picks. So really the only player that might get a contract is Bolton, it's looking like. Maybe Roulette if he develops some more. But this past draft, Jilkin, Betts, and Forstrom should get contracts. So, And then this guy, obviously, I already tried to sign. So... Let's see. So Connor Brown doesn't want to sign. You know what? I think I'm actually okay with that. I'm not going to sign Connor Brown. And the reason why is I can improve on Connor Brown and get a better player. Okay. Well, first off, before I do the proposed trade stuff and check my team's depth, let's take care of my coaching staff. So 15 out of 20. So I have, I have to sign two NHL scouts. So let's grab Sofia Mihalik and Ivan Ojedov. So I need an OHL scout and a WHL scout. I'm also going to sign this QMJHL scout. Um, so I'll have to fire one. I'm going to hire... So I have to fire one of my QMJHL scouts two of my USA scouts okay. and then I'll use the last slot on this one for Europe so I need to ha fire one of my QMJHL scouts and my two weakest USA scouts. Which is actually fine because they were going to be fired anyways. Okay. So there we go. That's that. Coaching. I now need a head coach and a goalie coach and a player for Chicago. So let's get my head coach first. The top end of my team would not really like him. Everybody seems like they would like him. A 60% fit. This is the guy I just got rid of. So. And then I need to hire an NHL assistant coach. Or a goalie coach. Shit. That's what I meant to do. And then I need to hire an AHL assistant. Uh, 
And that's just going to be that. Okay. Players that I need now. At center, I could use another center. I'm good on the left wing. I could use one right winger. Two, three, six. I'm just trying to get rid of Hamnick, man. Um, I'm just going to grab another defenseman. So I could, what did I say I needed? I needed one more center. I think I needed another right winger. And a defenseman. Right. Yes. Say so center, a right winger, and a defenseman. And those are the only real improvements I'm going to make to my team. So centers. Um, it's looking like Jordan Stahl might be the best one available. At least the best one available at a decent age. Or is he an RFA though? No, he's a UFA. Um. I'm going to do this only because he has the chance to get better. He only wants a year as well. So that's encouraging. It's just a, 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 a definite upgrade at center. So you've got that. I need a right winger now. Again, I can't hire, I can't get a better, like a fantastic right winger. Rocco Grimaldi is perfect. Boom. And then I needed a defenseman. I think Darnell Nurse, he's the best defenseman in the class, but he doesn't qualify as a great defenseman. 85 overall is not great. It's not even elite. It's top four defenseman. Oh, kitty. Oh, and then how many contract spots do I have? 34. So let me like actually just see if there are any prospects available or at least players that aren't like great. Senishin is twenty five, we'll give him a year. And I'll give Shaw a year. Oh, he's an RFA. Well Okay, so that's it for now. I think the team, well, I mean, I know the team will definitely improve. Getting all these scouts that I hired, which is really Head coach rejected. As did the AHL assistant coach. He didn't think the quality of our roster matched the challenge he was willing to take on. 
Was it this guy? It was. So Vance is probably the next best bet. As a head coach that we will probably want. And I still need the AHL assistant coach. When I get one without a goalie. Frederick Lee. Still waiting on hearing back from the other coaches. So I'd really like to see... Well, there's another scout. That was one of the uh, NHL scouts. That scouting department. Okay, so my assistant coach... Well... Dang it! <sighs> Not having very good luck um, in terms of coaching staff this year. The only one that actually rejected me was the NHL assistant, and that's because I or was the goalie coach. I, like, actively forgot to hire, like, specify goalie coach uh, for the other guy, so he obviously said no. That should be the last scout. I've got my AHL assistant coach. I've got Dominic Cahoon, so I've got another center. I've got my right winger. Mason Shaw, obviously, so I didn't even mean to sign him. I've got Dolan here. Boom, and I got my head coach. I got my goalie coach. And I got Darnell Nurse. So goal scoring was an issue last year. I think with the additions of Booth, which is the, the first overall pick, Cahoon and Grimaldi, that goal scoring won't be nearly as much of an issue. I think that by adding Nurse, we have a much better defense. And that'll hopefully mean we can um, see some growth on defense as well. And with the addition of... Or with hopefully Smushy taking over as the team's starter, like we should see some legitimate um, improvements in our team's record. I think this could be a team that contends for a Stanley Cup. Or not a Stanley Cup, but at least a playoff position. We'll be very close. And that was year two of not signing any big name free agents. So. Let's do that. I don't know why um, everything has to be complicated. Okay, so that would actually be worse. Um, Dabrowski is 25. That would make it worse. Okay. Yeah, the problem is I don't have any guys that have actually played on the first line before. So that's problematic. Booth, let's get him on the third line here. Varakas, I'm also very happy that he's doing so well. Um, so I like that. I mean, it, it's definitely a better roster and it's a better team. And again, like, defensively, I'm liking this. Um, and I'm liking where Will is at. I'm actually going to move and switch them. Um, I really do like where, where that's going. Um, I think our defense could be the, the thing that kind of carries the team this year, along with Smushy, who's now an 89 overall. Okay, that, that, that could be pretty big. Um, we do have two defensemen on the roster. If I put Bode Wild in the lineup, that makes the team better because he's more than likely going to develop. So I'm going to do that instead. Okay. Let's now check the Burnaby Aces, which is our AHL team. So, obviously, we don't have many players that we've drafted yet. Jack Drury was a free agent, and I'm actually going to see... Nope. Just kidding. Um, Robinson, I think, is the only player we've drafted on this roster. Yeah, the rest of these guys are, for the most part, going to be AHL, 
depth signings and depth players. Just because I don't have a prospect pool yet. I've only had three drafts, and only two of them have been decent. But again, we'll sim to February, we'll sim to the trade deadline. If I'm closer to being a playoff team, I will consider adding at the deadline. I still think that it's going to be important for this team to add picks. Um, just because of how this team is going to be working. But we'll, we'll keep an open mind. If there's an option to add like a halfway decent player... Like, I think we do it. All right. I do need to check scouting because we've done a lot on scouting. So... USA West, USA Central. Um, and this guy's actually going to the USA East. Okay. Um, and then I've got D, L, N, L, A, and N, L, A. Just until I get a better scout, this person's going to the extra league. Uh, don't expect us to find anybody in there with any of our European scouts, but it never hurts because we did have a gem. Um, that does remind me, I do need to make one of these guys a Liga scout. So let's see. This person's region accuracy is an A minus. I think there's a better way to look at this. There's B minus. So it's gonna be hecked. Um, we'll, we'll bump your. There's literally one goalie in the Osvenskan. That's funny. We'll move you to Finland. Um, and you'll be our Finnish scout from now on. Um. I like what we we're, we're building. I like what we're we've got going on. Let's keep it up. First game of the season against Columbus at home. Four-one loss. Okay. Two to one loss. I'm hoping that this isn't a recurring theme with the offense. This might just be one of those things where we get um, better as the season goes along. Just because we still have a lot of prospects or like young players that need to develop on the team. Okay. So we're 2 3 and 2 with this game against Washington. Oh my god. How good is Tara Vinen? I have the option to add a legitimate first line forward to this roster. Two second round picks is a little high. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't want to give them that. So Suzuki with a nice assist on the 4-2 goal. Uh, 
Um, yeah. So we give up more picks, but I'd rather keep the second. Um, just because we're still probably going to be picking like relatively highly. So let's edit the lines real quick. Let's make sure Tevo Teravainen's in the lineup. Boom! You love to see it. So that did kick our prospect out of the lineup. I'm going to be bold here and take... A lot out, and I'm gonna put Varakas on the fourth line. I'm gonna keep Booth here. He's having a decent season, four points in nine games. Adding Taravainen is going to be huge for this team. I know it. I could even add Grimaldi, but he just doesn't fit that line whatsoever. So. Adding Tevo Teravainen is a huge addition to this team. Because this is a team that doesn't have a legitimate first line, and they still don't. Um, they're close. They're, we're close. We almost have a legitimate first line, but unfortunately it's not quite... Um, yeah, it's not quite there yet, I don't think. That's just my opinion, but a 10-2 win against Boston. My God. I know that that's not going to happen every night with Tevo Teravainen in the lineup, but that's good to see. So Seth Jarvis and Ryan Suzuki got the assists on the last goal for Chicago, who currently leads 4-2 over Grand Rapids. And again, you're starting to see that this is a better team just because of one addition. Bruised right hand for Jake DeBrusque is unfortunate. It's going to change up the lines, and I'm going to have to make some moves, unfortunately. Nashville fires their head coach. We got a shootout win. Good year for rookies in this draft. Niederreiter out with a concussion until next month. Dabrowski is back for the team's next game, though. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I guess DeBrusque is technically younger and still could get better than an 83, but I doubt it. Technically, same with Sprong, although I doubt it. I don't know. I like it. Um... Since coming to the Canes, Taravainen has six points. Or to the Ice Caps, he has six points in 12 games. Not bad. The team has also not been very good. Um, injuries really, really wreck this team if one of the top members of this team goes down. So maybe another year where we, we come close but ultimately lose. Um, in the regular season. Or we miss the playoffs, I mean. Just because I, I don't I don't know what else I can do to make this team score, you know? I've added Tara Vinen, a top playmaker. It might just be the fact that we have no talent. Um, might be we need to add some more talented players. But either way, Quentin Kraus is allegedly a gem. We got a potential comparison going. 
from one of our scouts. But yeah, we've lost a ton of games in a row now. We don't really have any direction. I'm going to take a look at this. Um, no, I'm good. <sighs> okay. Well, Nazem Kadri is back in the lineup. The team is not doing well. Um, I don't know why. It, it could just be we don't have any any depth. Um, it looks like Jarvis just scored, by the way. But 
we've also had some injury troubles this year, which definitely doesn't help our uh, our case. Um, since I traded so many picks, and by so many I mean three, I am going to try and see if I can get something for some of our um, expiring players. So let's see. On the roster, players I'd be willing to part with: Dylan Gambrell, solid fourth line center. I think I'm I'm good on keeping him. Devon Taves, I don't see us keeping. I'll accept that. Easy. JVR is getting old. Okay, so nobody wants to keep him. So nobody wants JVR. Okay. I'm keeping Taravainen no matter what. Travis Hamanick might be able to fetch something for him. No. Andre Palat might actually fetch something. Yep. All right, so I've recouped some of my losses. I'm done with the trade deadline. I don't see us making any other moves. Goodbye. So Seth Jarvis got the rebound and scored to make it um, 5-2. Grand Rapids has changed their goalie. Um, so yeah, we've just made some trades. I, I don't think it makes the team any worse or any better. I really just wanted to make sure that we got some... Uh, assets. It helps us because Palat leaves us with some room for a prospect. I think Bode Wild comes into the lineup with Stetcher or Taves gone. So that's a big deal. And let's check the draft rankings for March because we're probably going to be picking pretty high in the draft. And by probably, I mean definitely. Judging by this. So let's get the gems and busts going. Just still the one, but it's a pretty good gem. Unfortunately, trading my second round pick in this year's draft was a bit of a mistake because I do miss out on that. But, I mean, it's not like the team's points are going to matter here. <sighs> Getting DeBrusque back is nice, but I just wish we didn't have the injuries beforehand. You know? <sighs> Jarvis' goal was not assisted by a Kane's prospect. But Reese has two points now, as does Jarvis. Suzuki has one. Sprained ankle. Ouch. <sighs> oh my god. It sucks because, like, the team could legitimately have had a really good year, and we just got injured. There's injuries and. No depth from prospect or no growth from prospects. Last game of the season is versus Arizona. And I'm just really upset. I'm sad. 
but we end on a win. Which again, I'd rather see the team go out on a high note. Like always, I, I'd prefer the team to always go out on a high note. Above all else, you know? We didn't come close to making the playoffs this year with 67 points. Um, Teravainen, I mean, we did add the team. Again, like this is the second season in a row where we've added the team's leading scorer. <sighs> so something is working. Like we are adding good players. The problem is that like... I'm just not adding any good players <laughs> or fits for the team. But again, <sighs> this was the third season in existence. So this is a year where I could actually make top, I could sign top talent. Um, I misspoke. Because I usually wait three years. Um, and this was the team's third season in existence. Came to be in 2020, 2021. Raleigh Durham moves up from third to second, which is a really big deal. Um, and let's talk about why. So either way, I'm probably going actually with the the center here just because we don't really have a center they're not bad but oh man this would be a really good prospect to grab the Patrick Kane comparison on the left wing we might have to unless some if if they pick cough if they pick fast that would be wonderful um but either way like you know, that's a big deal. I like it. Another gem in this draft, and it's a goalie at the end of the second with a high starter potential. So I like where we're at. I like that we have another high pick. Thornton is now a coach. Need to hire... Two new coaches for the AHL. And I believe a goalie coach again for the NHL. Great. Awards. I do want to see if any um, players won awards this year. So Tampa won the Stanley Cup. It was a Tampa versus San Jose final. Elise won the Calder, so this was her first year. Kind of crazy that she didn't make Ottawa in her first year as the first overall pick. That seems like poor asset management by the Sens. Um, where was Bot credited with an assist? What the hell are you talking about, dude? This is the AHL's official website, which... Okay. First overall, Fast went to the Sabres. So, Kaufman, Hans Kaufman is going to the Carolina, the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps, excuse me. 83 overall, already as good as Nino Niederreiter. This is a huge addition to the roster. Holy cow, I was not expecting that, and that helps us. We need a right winger. Our right wing, de our center depth is solid, but we really don't have a good right winger. I love that. Darren Fuller, our scouts seem to really like this guy, so we're going to pick him. Top nine forward, all right, cool. 
Pitlick just scored for the Wolves to make it 6-3. I've yet to draft a defenseman, so we're going to draft Ruben Odeline here. That wasn't very good. Okay, well, dang, this was a much better defenseman. Phil McClement is pretty weak um, in terms of skating. You go from... What?! He had him listed as a medium top 4D. That's so bad. This guy's medium franchise. What the hell? Lowly. Oh, well, that's actually good. Wow. Okay. I'm glad I took the shot on that. I'm really glad I pulled the trigger there. So, again, I'm just trying to, like, recoup some of my assets. Um, that was a really big deal having the team or having the Sabres pass up on um, Kaufman that w made me really happy because we got the player that I wanted the most I really wanted Kaufman because we needed the right winger I, I would have settled for the center but I, I was preferring I would have preferred if it didn't come to that you know and then picked a lot of defensemen in this draft. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. It wasn't a very good draft other than that, but let's we'll see. Alright, well... That's a big deal. That is a big deal. So the AHL, I need an assistant and a associate coach. Oops, forgot to sign scouts. I could probably do better with two scouts in the OHL and WHL. Like I know I already have, so... I can probably do better in Russia. Okay. I have a few changes to make to scouting department. We'll go to the contracts again. First off, I want to sign Kaufman here. So now I have these franchise players. Now I have the players that will be important. Kehun, I loved this signing. I think it was really good for the team. Gambrell. You know what? For a fourth line center, he's been exactly what I've wanted him to be. Kurashev will qualify him. JVR, I think I'm going to replace. Um, yeah. Going to replace JVR. I'll qualify Senishin and I'll sign Laudnia for another year. Defense. Letty, I'm going to offer a two year extension. I'm going to get rid of Hamnick and Stetcher. I'm going to qualify Vua and Samorakov. Or maybe I think it's Roy, actually. That's it. Um, 
Hamnick and Stetcher are gone. I'm going to try and see if I can find better defensemen in this draft. And then Jesper Wallstedt I'm going to sign. So, I think we're good. It's going to be another year where I maybe try and make like one or two improvements to a team. Or to the team. Okay, whatever. So Cahoon and Gambrell both want new contracts, but want more money. I'm fine with giving them all more money. That should be good enough to get that done for him. And Gambrell is a solid fourth line center at this point. We'll send to free agency now. We get the signings from the rest of my prospects. All right, so let's get let's get going. First of all, I need an AHL head coach. Apparently, the other one didn't like being here. So we'll grab this guy, Vince Dundas. I'll grab the NHL assistant coach. I'll grab the goalies. Then I need an AHL associate coach. <laughs> he's snoring. He's not very. He doesn't do much. He just sleeps. Alright, and we'll get the AHL assistant coach. Scouting! Shoot, I can't actually remember what I needed in the scouting or how many spaces I have. So we'll assign Scout, we'll take a look. I have five spots open, okay. So with that, I need one NHL Scout, for sure. I need one OHL Scout. I need a WHL Scout, okay, look at that. I need a Russian scout and a European scout. This is a big deal. This guy is better in two categories and only worse in one. Oh, it's a girl. Sorry, fam. And this person has a lot of B minuses, which is really good. Only a handful of C's. So, that is it. The team's needs. I'm obviously going to build up a team with goal scoring and defense this year. Centers. We're good at center. Could use another winger. Maybe like a fourth line winger. Ah oh, no, I've got it. I'm I'm chilling. I'm good. I have five, and that's just gonna go over there, okay. Maybe what I could do is I could instead of Niederreiter I can get Can try and get Carolina's third for Nino and like a sixth. 
Okay. So I know that I need a like strong right winger. On defense, one, two, three, four, five. I could use a strong defenseman. And I'm going to leave it at that because I did add that player, um, Kaufman. So a strong right winger being William Nylander. This wasn't planned. That was not planned, but that's perfect. That's exactly who I wanted. A strong, like a legitimately strong right winger to be on my top line. Because I don't have a top... Um, I don't have a top line. Defensively, it's looking like the team is still going to struggle. But adding Neil Pionk, an offensive defenseman, will help the power play and will give me some options moving forward. So I think that's a solid addition. But adding William Nylander might just push this team over the, de uh, over the edge. Or over the hump, I mean. Let's add some prospects. Let's add Kolosov. <laughs> Excuse me for the hiccup there. Let's add no slung fist. Defensively was the only the only way I could have improved this team. Or that AHL team without, you know, just screwing everything up tremendously. So by adding William Nylander, this team is automatically better. Automatically better. Um Was the AHL associate coach that said no? Like, we really needed a solid, solid um, first line. And I think we have that now. Got my head coach. Come on, everybody, keep signing here. Yeah. That was one of the two prospects I reached out to for a contract. There's the coach. Pionk accepted, as did Lundqvist. There's William Nylander. So here come, all of a sudden, once again, we add a player that should be near the top of our team in scoring. Our first line should be Teravainen with Nylander and either Cahoon or Trocek. Depends. And this is a player that can play on our first line and be relatively good, I'd say. So we're simming to the next season. We're hopefully going to keep. Um, yep, let's let's keep going for at least a little while. So let's do that. It helps to keep the scoring where it's at. Um... Again, Veracus is just a grinder. <laughs> but yes, so I, I'm excited because this is a legitimate first line. This is a really good second line, a really good third line, and a really good fourth line. We have that high-end piece that they needed have a coach that really fits the team. 
You know? We have basically two second pairs and a good third pair. So we still lack that top defenseman that teams covet. Um, that might be something to keep in mind for later. But I'm optimistic heading into this season that this might be our first year in the playoffs. Optimistic, but not expectations. Playoffs are the goal, not the expectation just yet. Okay, sorry, my controller died. I'm like rotating between two controllers here. Here we go. Wow, Eric Howler just had a goal called back. That would, I believe, would have been his first of the season. A shootout win to open up the year. I believe that's the first time we've opened up the season with a win. It was a 6-5 to five shootout win. And we've got some draft rankings. This will be important to keep track of. And this is probably going to be... Oh, no, it's not going to be one of the years where I wish we had like the first overall pick because franchise. This is the year where I wish we made the playoffs. Well, let's, let's make the playoffs, folks. Let's make the playoffs. There's there's another win. Keep it up, team. Um, let's check how Des Moines is doing. Lucas Mercury still no points, man. He's on a bit of a cold streak now. Okay. I mean, we're above 500, which is something that we can't. Couldn't really say for the team ab or about the team last season. They were not a very good team. And at the end of October, the team was four four and one. We're now five four and one, uh, thanks to the Battle of North Carolina. But you know what, like, if I see tangible improvement from this team, I'm going to be happy. And it seems like, at least for the most part, offensively, we've been good. So I was trying to take a picture of my cat. Um, if any team weren't, uh, or if a team was offering me something that wasn't a center, if they were like, hey, here's a defenseman. I heard your team really needs defense. I would have been like, hell yeah, man. Defense would be dope. Send it over. You know? Um, but alas, the team is now under 500. <sighs> it hurts. It really, it really, really hurts. Like, we just cannot get a win here. And I don't know what, what I can do other than... <sighs> 
But again, it's like scoring is the issue. I mean, if we maybe had, I mean, we, we need more depth and like our prospects need to develop. And that's just, that's just a fact. Like our prospects need to develop. Huge win against the Sharks. Um, but I'm going to pause it here after that loss to the Capitals. Nylander, again, like we've, this is, an, again, another season where we are, where we acquired our team's leading scorer. And we're just still not moving. Like, the needle isn't moving in terms of actual on-ice results. And I'm not looking for like a small upgrade in, in on D. And it may just be where I have to get lucky and find like a Matt Dumba in free agency. I'm not going to trade for Matt Dumba right now because I'm not stupid. But I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm just going to have to wait and get a better defenseman in free agency this year. I may have to even do an offer sheet. Um, at the rate that this is going, but I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna do the trade deadline this year. I'm just gonna sim right on past it. Cause yeah, I just don't know what I can do with the team, man. I've done all I can to make this team good. There was a win, and then we follow it up with a loss. We're going to win again. We're going to follow it up with a loss. It's like the team just can't develop any sort of confidence, any sort of win streak here, Like, which is fine. We're, we're just going to keep getting these top picks. We're just going to keep getting these you know, really good players in the draft. I'm thinking like if there's a defenseman available when we pick, I might as well draft him because this team just for whatever reason cannot – develop defensemen. I also haven't drafted a ton of defensemen high, like very highly, so that might be it. That might be why. And I mean, since I've started complaining about it, the team has won four straight. So I'm just going to keep complaining about it, and y'all are just going to have to deal because I don't know why this team can't win a damn game. I don't know why we can't consistently win when I've done everything, I've acquired, in the past two seasons, I've acquired Tevo Teravainen and William Nylander. I've drafted first overall and second overall. It's like, I added um, Neil Pionk this year to help with goal scoring because we needed help on the power play. He's an offensive defenseman. Now he's out with a pulled groin until, you know, January 13th. And it's like uh, every addition I make to the team just seems to not really go anywhere. I feel like the Sabres. Kaufman out until March 10th with post-concussion syndrome. So the second overall pick is missing half the season. Um, or at least 30 games. So that's it. Like You can write the season off now. Because we're missing a top nine forward. Dylan Gambrell out with a sore foot, and that keeps him out three goddamn weeks. His foot hurts. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, now we've won three straight. Neil Pionk is back, which is actually a big deal. Like, we need him. But still, we're not a playoff team. We're 42 points. 45 points would have gotten us a wild card position. Now, with that shootout win and a loss to the Sens... We're basically where we were at. 
44 points. We would need 52 points to be in a playoff spot in the division now. Multiple Raleigh-Durham players are now eligible to be dressed. So we've got Gambrell back. I doubt we've got anybody else um, back that I can think of. It didn't matter against the Rangers, a team we actually need to beat in order to stay competitive in the division. Like, yes, it's great that we won against the Oilers, but it doesn't matter if you can't beat those teams in your division. Oh, hey, there's a gem at the end of the draft. Yerki Tuparainen. Left defenseman. That's actually not bad, but you know what? It's probably not going to mean anything. There's a win against Boston. And again, it's awesome that we're getting these wins against Boston, but it's like we've got to beat the teams in our division. And we, we have. We beat um, Caroline. We beat Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh's worse than us this year. For what it's worth, they are worse than us. And now we're only three points out of a wild card spot. Not bad. But it's like, how are you going to gain those points if you can't win consistently? We're below 500. We're at 500 right now after that win against San Jose. Here's what you have to do. You have to beat Washington here. Here's the teams you have to beat. Washington, New Jersey, the Islanders. That's like just in the next like couple months, and you can't even beat Washington. A lot of these games are West Coast games where you're not going to have opportunities to take, like overtake teams in front of you because... The games, quite frankly, don't matter as much because they're against Western Conference teams. It's great to get the points. It's great to get these three wins in a row. Oh, now we're tied with the Hurricanes, actually. So, you know what? Like, I'm just going to keep bitching because that's working. Abdominal strain for Trocek hurts, and that's going to... But again, like, how's the team going to respond? Six to one loss on home ice against Minnesota. That's embarrassing. Half the team is... Or ha like. All of the division, except for the last place team, is in the hunt for the playoffs in this division. It's incredibly competitive, which is awesome. Like, other than the Devils, like, this is, like, a really competitive division this year. You get a big win against the Arizona Coyotes here. Rant is out with a bruised hand, but it doesn't really matter because Smushy's better. But you lose against the Jets... You have to beat the Devils, because this is a team in your division that sucks. They're not good, and you have to win. And you lose. You're missing Trocek. I get it, but you've got to beat those bad teams. Look, we're doing great against the Western Conference teams. We're doing great against the in the games where it doesn't matter. Now, Kaufman has returned. He's way too early. I'm just going to continue Um, it's like, I don't know, man, I just want, I just want a competitive team. It's saving the deadline, and I want to see which teams got worse. It looked like many did. Beating the Islanders is a big deal, because they're not good. Okay. All right, you've got three wins. Ranta out with an injured hamstring. That's fine. Oh, there's a loss. All right, you're four points out. It's doable, but you have to win out pretty much, or you at least have to win the Metropolitan Division games. Pionk being out might be it, though, and that's so frustrating that this team is still like one injury away from being done. Um, so we'll take a look at the draft rankings. I have no idea where this team is going to end up in the draft. Um, but a high elite goalie, that's awesome. I've got a franchise goalie, so I'm not worried. But here's where you have to win. You have to win this back-to-back. -back. Trocek broke his nose. Jesus, Trocek, just stay healthy. For the love of God. <laughs> But you win both those games against the Hurricanes and the Penguins. That's big. You shut out the Ducks. You're still four points out, though. You've got to get another team to lose when you win. 
Like another team ahead. Like the Canes have to lose. Huge win against the Rangers. Wow. But no Metropolitan. We're finishing the season off with four games against Western Conference teams. We're in a playoff spot. Wait a second. Calhoun out with a pulled groin. No. No. 3 nothing win. What's on the line here? 87 points. Oh, no, we're in the playoffs. We're a playoff team. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, the, Can the Canadians lost. Oh, we're a playoff team. Oh, let's go. Oh, my God. So this game actually doesn't matter, but, like, holy crap. Wow. Oh, we're finally a playoff team. Let's go. And Kehun is back. Oh, my God. Guys, this is amazing. Um... And it was my complaining. So it's the it is the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps versus the Washington Capitals. So it's the Caps versus the Caps in the playoffs. Ugh. way too stressful, folks. Booth with forty nine points, which is a lot better than the twenty five he had the year before. A lot more balanced as well. And Kaufman, despite only playing in 55 games, had 30 points. That would have been a big year um, for him. So I said this, that we would do this. I'm going to try my best to call as much of this game as I possibly can. I'm, I have plans tentatively later on, so I don't know actually how long... I'll have to do this. So we are going to call the team's first ever playoff game. Yeah, so the first ever playoff game for the Rally Durham Ice Caps. Yes, I've not chosen a side. I'm sure I want to continue. Sorry, I'm tweeting on the Prospects account. Cahoon, after the big hit, Jake DeBrusque has it. We're underway in the playoffs. DeBrusque with a shot. Great save, Samsonov. Great save by Smushy, and the Ice Caps survived their first test of the playoffs. This is a momentous occasion for the Raleigh Durham Ice Caps organization. The Raleigh area is booming, and they actually have some fans in the Capital One Arena tonight. Great save by Smushy, and he's going to blocker that one out of play. Just a tremendous moment for this franchise they've worked very hard over the years to get to this point and it's finally going to pay off they're a wild card team and their coach and management says we're not just satisfied with the playoffs we want to win the cup and here we go defensively this team is not the strongest so you're going to have to rely on your offensive players like Nylander and Tara Vinen. you're going to have to get them to produce when the team needs it the most and you're going to have to rely on your goaltending. You've got a young goalie, but already one of the best goalies in the entire league. And you have a young team. This is a team where most of the players are in their 20s. Very few veterans on this roster. They've gone with the youth movement here, and it seems to be working. Or at the very least, it seems to be doing a very good job. Kovalchuk dumps the puck into the zone, and... The Ice Caps are going to recover. The Ice Caps carrying it up. Varakas with it now. The former fifth overall pick. He's going to chase after the puck. And Forbert picks it up for the Caps. And Backstrom has it now. Varakas chasing on the back check. Can't quite get it. 
broken up play and Kadri with it now. Nazem Kadri signed as a free agent, one of the team's first signings in free agency. Shot by Varakas and a great save by Samsonov on the backhand with a shot and a good stop. Chris Letang, Varakas has it again, shot. And he's been tripped up and what a shift from the young forward there. Varakas is looking very good. This is a penalty on Derek Forward here, just taking a very careless penalty, tripping up uh, Varakas. And then Cahoon and Tavina come out on the ice now. Cahoon is just returning from an injury. Kept him out a couple games at the end of the year. He's clear, that's Connor Murphy. And we're going to have to reset. The up with Neil P. Punk. He is going to be a good shot on the way through and Jaros. Had it, lost it. Neil also had it. And Bozak clears. It's like a, um, it's like a reunion of like old Leafs. Neilander with it now. Seven to four wolves. Jesus. Yahoon. To Pionk. Shot. Missed the net there after a block in front. Connor Murphy had it, but Tara Vinen with it now. Shot. And another missed the net. Cahoon to Jaros. Misses. Cahoon. Nylander was in front and a poke check. What a stop there. Oh, mercy. Alrighty. Second unit's getting a chance now. It's Kadri, Trocek, and Gambrell. Gambrell's been an imp uh, important addition to this team. Jake DeBrusque here on the on the, the point. Okay. Johansson's gonna backhand it out. Here comes Gambrell up the ice. Taking time, Kadri now, shot from a bad angle, scores! It comes in off the Caps defender. John Carlson puts it in his own net. And the Raleigh-Durham Ice Caps take a one to nothing lead in the first period. Nazem Kadri gets a power play goal. It's an own goal off of John Carlson. What a play, what a mistake there. And Kadri just... Showing the default road uniforms here that I didn't put any work into. That's a bit of a it's a bit of a shock there that Kadri gets the goal. We have to look through all these replays, by the way. And yeah, just a a huge moment. The first goal, the first playoff goal in franchise history goes to Nazem Kadri, who I believe might have scored the first goal in franchise history. I could be wrong. In fact, I think I am, because Kadri didn't come until next year. Booth with the shot, and Samsonov covers that one up and plays it as the puck was blocked on the way through, I believe. Or at least his stick might have been interfered with, but not in like an illegal way. Booth skating up. He's got it in. He's got a lane. Look at this. Oh, but he misses. Johnson there. Sticks with the puck after the board battle. He's skating on behind his own net. Andreas Janssen. Up to Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk gets hit hard, and what? A penalty is coming up. For trip. Oh, that might make sense. It kind of looked like an awkward hit. Yeah, it's Josh Manson. It looked like a body check. Sorry, that noise was to my cat. Bode Wild is killing penalties, huh? They did a good job of it there. Either way, Jonathan Marsh is... Man, this Capstein just finds ways to add great talent. Smushy with the save, and he's going to hold on. Hi, kitty. You're choosing violence again. Ovechkin shot, and Smushy stands tall. 
He's going to pass it. Oh, crap. I thought he was going to get rid of I thought he was going to go for the face-off. But great play. And more time is salted off the clock there. I like that play. Very high IQ from Smushy. He's going to play it again to Darnell Nurse. And the balls on this goaltender here. The absolute chutzpah it takes to do that. Landis got with the shot. Oh, great save, Smushy. Sorry, you're going to hear some jingling. I'm trying to play with my... Oh, my cat broke his freaking toy. And the ice caps clear it out. Ovechkin starts the breakout. Interesting play there to get Ovi to start the breakout. Marsha so shot. Smushy with the stop, and he's going to actually hold on this time. All right, so Smushy gets it. He's going to hold on then after the face-off. He probably could have played this one, actually, and it wouldn't have been a bad idea. But um, either way, he just decides to hold on, and we're going to keep going here. All right, off the face-off, a loss. Janssen to Bertuzzi, shot off the post. Off the inside of the post and out, and Smushy makes a nice save on a blocked shot. What a chance there from Smushy. So just a few seconds left, 23 on the penalty kill. And Will Looper's going to clear it, so he's going to ice off more time there. Backstrom had it, blocked on the way through by, Sm or by the defense, and Smushy holds on with six seconds left. Darnell Nurse, what a hit there. Oh my goodness, the Capitals player runs over Nurse and Bode Wild starts the breakout. Nazem Kadri waits for some friends. That was interference. <laughs> that was not a good play by the Ice Caps player there. That should have been a penalty. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take the even strength. But Bertuzzi with it gets it to Bozak in the neutral zone, and Backstrom enters the zone. Shot by Backstrom. Good save. Smushy. He's going to pass it to Bode Wild. I've seen Wild starting some breakouts. Pretty successful zone exits in this one. Cahoon had it. I don't know what he was doing there. Now, unsuccessful zone entry. Bertuzzi led to a shot. Great save by Smushy. Once again, keeping the team in the game here been pretty much all capital since that penalty was called another great save by smushy and he'll hold on 8.9 seconds left in the third or in the first period here it's been an entertaining first period two penalties or one power play for each team you have the um You have the Ice Cap scoring on their first. Ovechkin shot block. Kuznetsov, what a stop by Smushy. That's me snapping at my cat. I'm sorry. He's trying to get behind, and I don't want our internet to crash because he unplugged something because he's an idiot. You're stupid, cat. You know that? You're not smart. You've been really dumb right now. All right, we'll resume the game. Second period on its way.
Josh Manson spins around the defense, gets it to Cahoon, and we're going to start the, po the second period. My goodness, that was a sentence that I almost just like stroked out on. My brain just didn't work. <laughs> Ovechkin had it, got it to Marcia So. Marcia So now. Poke check, but retains the puck. Gets it to Carlson with Kuznetsov at the slot. Ovechkin's shot was blocked and then stopped by Smushy. Good play by the defense to slow that down and redirect it to an easy spot. Oh, what a hit! An open ice! A phenomenal hit! Backstrom shot misses the net. Hi, kitty. Johansson blocked! Marsha so with it now. He's going to turn. Shot stopped by Smushy. Letty recovers. Letty says he's going to go coast to coast. Look at this play by Letty. Shot. Samsonov makes the easy stop. Smushy, look at this stop there. A great pad save on Ovechkin after the redirect. It's the youth line here. Booth, Kadri, and Varakas now. Hi, kitty. You're doing like a hunting trot. Manson, he could have shot it there. It wouldn't have been a half bad play. Varakis has it. No friends in the offensive zone, but he's still going to do it anyways. Carlson now, though. It was a good attempt by Varakis. I don't, I don't hate the effort. Varakis now has it. He's been noticeable tonight. Couple good plays. He drew that penalty that we scored on eventually. Oh, what a play in front, and Kadri nearly put it in. Johnson. All right, here it comes. Oh, he was set up for the one-timer, but the defenseman got in the way. Carlson, and we're going to reset now. Backstrom has it for the Capitals. Impeded on the way through. Bertuzzi gets hit. And the puck's going to slide past the net. Backstrom. To Forbert, Derek Forbert again broken up by the defense. Lots of sticks getting in the lanes here. A shot, Bertuzzi with a shot in close and Smushy with the save. Darnell Nurse with the pass and unfortunately that one's going to get blocked and Backstrom takes it the other way. He has it at the point. Landis Cog shot shouldered away by Smushy. Bertuzzi shot hits the post. And Smushy's going to have to cover up my... Goodness, what a chance from Bertuzzi. I don't know how that went in. That didn't go in. Wow. I just, I don't know how that didn't go in, folks. What a shot. Another save by Smushy. He's going to pass it to Pionk. Smushy's got a flair for the dramatic with these passes here. I like it. Pass to Terravine. And oh, what a save on the pad. And a great pass by Pionk. I'm, I'm really liking this game. It's entertaining. It's fun. Great play to break up that zone entry. And Forbort carries it in and goes on a line change. So he'll dump it in. And Trocek has it for the ice caps. The ice caps. Trocek, one man show here. And Johansson broke that up. Taravina with a nice intercept at neutral ice. He's going to. Oh, he almost sprung a ice caps forward. Oh, that was almost a phenomenal play there. Nearly. Just a, that was the save on Taravina there earlier. Manson had it, got his stick lifted, and all of a sudden, it's Capitals with the puck on the boards. Oshi to Tyler Bozak. Shot and a good save there. Another board battle. That Washington's going to win. Bozak lost the puck momentarily and had it again. Johansson, nice way to get around the defenders, but a good block in front, and Nylander has it now. He's going to skate up all alone. Look at him, coast to coast. William Nylander shot on the backhand 
on the partial breakaway, gets stopped by Samsonov. Trocek is down on the ice for a long time after taking a nasty hit. Shot at the end of the period. What a stop there. Entertainment on both ends of the ice at the end of the period here. But still, after one period, the score is your Raleigh Durham Ice Caps 1, the Washington Capitals 0. We'll have post. We'll have intermission comments and highlights. Uh, yeah, uh, if the Washington Capitals could uh, stop hitting the post, they'd uh, really be in this game right now. They're out shooting the Ice Caps 21 to 10. The Ice Caps are winning though, and the Washington Capitals have two shots that have hit the post. Smushy has been phenomenal in this. I don't know why I sound like Bernie Sanders. Smushy has been phenomenal in this game, and he'll need to keep it up if the if the Ice Caps have any hope of winning this game and retaining or er, holding on to this lead. That's my uh, that's my commentary voice, I guess. But here we go, Nylander with it, shot, and Samsonov with a good save. It seems like the only dangerous line is the first and second line, and I guess that's kind of like how I built the team. Right now, at least, you know, but like, come on, guys. Josh Manson shooting, and he misses the net after the block. Marcia so has it. What a move, but a great poke check at the last second nullifies that. Manson gets hit hard by Ovechkin. Johansson with it. Gets it to Marcia so who gets hit. But that was Nick Letty in front. Letty's going to get it to Dominic Cahoon and Nylander with it. He's going to take it on the outside. Can't get through. And Johansson picks it up. Johansson going in against Letty here. He makes the move against Letty. Poke check in. No, that was Darnell Nurse. Excuse me. It's hard to read the road uniforms. I should have made that better. But I didn't work on the road uniforms at all. Marcia so here. What a play. Josh Manson, what a play. Varakas, again, he's been a part of some of the best shifts by this Ice Caps team here. Carlson with it now. Doesn't look like this will be one of those shifts, though. Carlson takes it up. Poke check, and Kadri had it. Pionk with it now. Neil Pionk and Darnell Nurse trading. The puck on defense. Poke check by Kovalchuk. What a play. Shot blocked on the way through, and Darnell Nurse has it now. Nurse is going to carry it in. He dumps the puck in. The ice cap's going for a, line, a partial line change. Looks like on defense here. And Backstrom with it now to Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk. Nice little move to gain some space. Backstrom shot is blocked. Shot in front scores. That's Ilya Kovalchuk with the goal. You knew it was coming. What a play there. Look at this. He takes two defenders with him, and that leaves all alone in front. Nothing Smushy can do about that play there. Wow. Just an absurd, absurd amount of skill. And honestly, a lapse in defensive coverage that never should have happened. Uh, this is a team that, you know... If they make a defensive miscue, it is over for them because they don't have the talent on defense to make up for it. Like, if they make one mistake, chances are it's over. They are going to need a goal here after being vastly outplayed. Gambro with a shot! Great pad, save Samsonov. It looks like they're shooting low to the ice. I wonder if that's the read on him. Oh, helmet's off. Tara Vinen, though, with it. Backhand. Oh, we know he made the pass. That's that's vintage Tevo Tara Vinen right there. <laughs> Bertuzzi on the boards. Got it to Forbort. Forbort, what a... The defender let him walk on through. I guess they knew he would have missed wide or something, but that was bad. What a play. Shot scores on the backhand. Andre Kopitar. My God, this Capitals team. Just what a goal. I mean, that was just a heck of a shot there. A 
That's unfortunate. Jake DeBrusque, and now the Ice Caps are going to have to really work hard here to get this goal back with just six minutes left in overtime, or in the third period. Ovechkin, blocked on the way through. They haven't had many opportunities in this game, and it's shown. Uh, Kuznetsov just allowed to waltz. Just allowed to walk into the defensive zone, or the offensive zone, no problem. We'll just give you the front of the net. Here you go, buddy. Just not a good play. Johansson. Marcia so to Johansson, to Ovechkin with a shot that was blocked. Great play by the defense there, but they've got to get it out. Just about three and a half minutes left, and they turn it over. It's looking like the Ice Caps are going to lose this game. DeBrusque with it now. I have a phone call. Give me one moment.
Okay, I'm ending the stream, um, but I did see that we tied it, which is awesome. I am going to have to end the stream early. I don't know why I hit resume game. Um, I'm going out to dinner, and I, well, we're grabbing dinner. We're not really going out. We're just getting food. You know what I mean, but we lost in overtime, and that's pretty understandable, actually, because... I don't know, the team just didn't have a great game. We we had 14 shots in two periods of play. But a solid overtime loss. Um, good things to build on. We will pick up on this next time. I think this series is really cool. I'm actually really enjoying it, um, despite me complaining. Like, I am really enjoying building a team. But until next time, I will see everybody later.